Good morning, six. I hope you're well and have had a good morning thus far. Today in English, sorry, today in reading, we're going to be thinking about chapter six of Private Peaceful and we're going to be making some predictions based on that text. In our be successful today, what we're going to need to be able to do is to identify what the question we're looking at is asking. We're going to think about how the text suggests events will unfold and we're going to support our answer with a reference to or a quotation from the text. So we're going to remember to do that every time we try and formulate a, a, a thorough answer to those inferential questions and those predictive questions. Right, guys, a quick recall text. OK, so just shout out of your answers here. Who killed Bertha? Who suggested looking for Joe in the churchyard? Which character was singing in the pub? Who came to the peaceful's house to complain about letters being sent? Think. Who was it who killed Bertha? It was. Colonel. Okay, I remember he shot, um, shot him where Molly and Charlie were having their rendezvous. Who suggested looking for Joe in the churchyard? It was. Molly, yeah, it was her suggestion based on her knowledge of chat of um Joe. who was singing in the pub. Yeah, it was Farmer Cock. Remember, Charlie's new employer likes a drink and was there when they went when um Mrs. Peaceful went to ask for help looking for Joe. Who came to the home to complain about the letters? It was Molly's mother, wasn't she? Talked about how Molly had been born in sin and didn't want her to be meeting with Charlie at all. Okay. Right, guys, we're going to look, as we've done previously, at two or three pages of the text. And as we do that, at the end, we're going to try and use some of these words to fill in language in the text. I know this is a challenging vocabulary task, but it's just a way of utilising the vocabulary. Otherwise, we'll do the same vocabulary task every day of the week. I think that'll be a bit boring. So the sentence I've got to fill in is the soldier needs action immediately so he asked his assistant to something the battalion so i'm going to think about something a soldier might get another soldier to force people to do to to help people quickly okay so i've got to think about that when i'm reading through this section so page 80 beyond and as far as the dark horizon um the countryside was filled with pinpricks of moving light we knew then that mother must have persuaded the colonel to mobilize everyone on the estate to join in the search so here again, mother's relationship with the colonel is interesting because she shows that she can get him to do things. And here he's forced all the people who work for him to go and look for um, Joe. The way Michael Morperga described it, I think is really evocative as well, the pinpricks of moving light. So that's the idea that people are walking around with their torches and those torches are like pinpricks of light against a dark background. Okay, so it's like there's little bits of light seeping through the dark sky and those pinpricks of light uh, the people walking around looking for Joe. By dawn, there was still no word of Big Joe, still no sign of him. The colonel had called in the police and as time passed, everyone was point, everything was pointing towards the same dreadful conclusion. So now the prospect's out. But the implication here is clear. They think he's dead. He's been out all night. They've looked, many of them. It hasn't just been that he's been out all night. Everybody's been looking for him. We saw the police searching the ponds and the riverbanks with long poles. Everybody knew that Big Joe could not swim. Well, if he's in there and he can't swim, he's going to be dead. That was when I first began to believe that the worst could really have happened. No one dared to voice this fear. But all of us were beginning to feel of it and we felt it in each other too. We were searching over ground we had already searched several times. So they're going back over places they've already checked. So that shows they're running out of places to search. They're worried that, they've, that this is going badly. All the other explanations for Big Joe's disappearance were being discounted one by one. If he had fallen asleep somewhere, Surely he must have woken up by now. If he'd gone and got himself lost, surely with all the hundreds of people out looking, someone would have found him by now. Everyone I met was grey and grim-faced. All tried their best to raise a smile, but no one could look me in the eye. I could see it wasn't just fear anymore. It was worse. There was desperation in those faces, a feeling of complete hopelessness that they could not disguise, however hard they tried. Right, guys, just looking at that page then, as, as with the other ones, for this vocabulary element, um, the page is almost split into two. So the two sentences that need filling in are split into the two parts of the page. Somewhere in that red section, there's a verb which shows what a soldier might get somebody to do to help somebody. And here, if I look, it's mobilised because I can see the mother must have persuaded the colonel to mobilise. Now, the colonel's a soldier, a, a senior soldier, and mobilise means to mobilise a group of people. And here it's a battalion, mobilise the battalion of people. 
So I've picked that word mobilize from that section. Now in the blue section then, there's something about he was so something due to the loss of his best friend, which shows how somebody's feeling about how their appearance might be due to the loss, whatever that's the death or the, the departure of their best friend. So I'll move out of the way again, guys. I think that I can open my sentence with for this next one. Round about noon, thinking it was just possible Big Joe might somehow have found his way out home on his own, we went back to check. We found Mother sitting there alone, clutching at the arms of her chair and staring ahead of her. Charlie and I tried to raise her spirits, tried to reassure her as best we could. I don't think we were at all convincing. Charlie made her a cup of tea, and Mother would not, but Mother would not touch it. Molly sat at her feet and laid her head in her lap. A ghost of a smile came to Mother's face then. Molly could give comfort where we could give none. Okay, that shows that relationship that's emerged over many years between Molly and uh, Mother Peaceful, the fact that she's able to care for her in a way that her sons actually couldn't when she's so upset about her oldest son, Ch Joe, being vulnerable. Charlie and I left them there together and went outside into the garden. Clinging to what little hope we had left, we tried to go back in time to work out what might have been in Big Joe's mind to make him go off like that. Perhaps it could help us to discover where he had gone if we understood why he had gone. Was he looking for something, perhaps, something he'd lost? But what? Had he gone off to see someone? If so, who? There was little doubt in our minds that his sudden disappearance was in some way connected to Bertha's death. The day before, both Charlie and I had felt like going up to the big house and killing the colonel for what he had done, to so seeing how furious Tommy and Charlie had been about the dog the day before. Maybe, we thought, maybe Big Joe was feeling the same, so maybe they're worried now that Big Joe might have gone to try and hurt the colonel because he was angry, because he cared for Bertha. Perhaps he had gone out to avenge, so fight back against the, the, the perpetrators of Bertha's death. Perhaps he was skulking up at the big house in the attics, in the cellars, just waiting for his opportunity to strike, skulking, that kind of hiding bit in the shadows. But we realised, even as we voiced them, that all such ideas were nonsense, were nothing but ridiculous nonsense. Big Joe didn't, didn't have it in him. Now here, what could I put at the beginning of my sentence? Something everyone, he hadn't been there when the crime took place was the burglar's plan. Okay, what within that first part of the page? So maybe it's something where he's trying to show people something, he's trying to persuade people of something. So is there something where somebody does something here which shows they're trying to persuade people of something? Because the burglar wants to persuade people he wasn't there. Bats are known to hide in musky what? What kind of place might a bat hide in that's featured in that blue section of the text? He's something, or well, think about what kind of belief, what kind of adjective could go for that belief um, in the first sentence as we move on to the third page. Big Joe didn't have it in him even to think of doing such a thing. He had never in his life been angry at anyone, not even the wolf woman. And after all, she'd given him enough reason enough and plenty. He could be hurt very easily, but he, could never, he was never angry and certainly never violent. Time and again, Charlie and I would come up with a new scenario and a different reason for Big Joe's disappearance. But in the end, we had to dismiss every single one of them as fanciful. Then we saw Molly come down the garden towards us. I was just wondering, she said. I was wondering where Big Joe would most want to be. What do you mean? Charlie asked. Well, I think he'd want to be where Bertha is. So he'd want to be in heaven, wouldn't he? I mean, he thinks Bertha's in heaven, doesn't he? Remember this conversation Mother had had with, Char uh, with uh, Joe about heaven and how Charlie had said the colonel belonged down there. So if he wanted to be with Bertha, then he'd have to go up to heaven, wouldn't he? I thought for a terrible moment that Molly was suggesting that Big Joe had killed himself so that he could go up to heaven and be with Bertha. I didn't want to believe it, but it kind of made a dreadful sense. Then she explained. He told me once, Molly went on, that your father was up in heaven and could still see us from where easily from where he was. He was pointing upwards, I remember, and I didn't understand exactly what he was trying to tell me at first. I thought he was pointing at the sky in general sort of a way, or maybe at the birds, maybe. But then he took my hand and made a point with him to show me. And I'm going to stop there because I need you to make your predictions based on that text in a little bit. Within that first section of the page then, 
what kind of belief might make somebody, um, what kind of belief in fairies could have been changed or could have been undermined when somebody's costume was found? Um, and then the second one, as something as he felt. Okay, so it's a description of a feeling of how somebody felt. Um, he could not undo what he had done. Okay, so how might somebody feel about something they had done? Okay, and the first one's somewhere within that section. Okay, so some kind of uh, some kind of belief, an adjective that could go in front of the word belief. Okay. Right, guys. As ever, first section on the first page. Second section, then we're going to be looking at predictions. So, if we think about this example of a text, so back on page seventy-eight and seventy-seven, um, do you think Joe would have been happy? So, we've just got the idea that birth has been buried. Um, Birth is in heaven, according to mother, um, and that, that even then we see that Big Joe went missing. None of us was that worried, not at first, not while it was still like Big Joe would often go wandering off. So if, if he often goes wandering off, maybe he's happy. Actually, no. Okay. Do you think Big Joe would have been happy? There's lots of reasons I could say he wouldn't have been happy, but I'm thinking that now when he's out and about, he's unhappy because of the dog dying. Um, that's definite. But also I could point out that it's something he He'd gone off before, but the fact that he's frightened of the dark makes me think, actually, he's going to be really unhappy. I don't think he will be happy because it is dark and he's afraid of the dark. One mark. But I want that extra detail. Furthermore, the fact that he's acting unusually and not stomping or singing. Normally when he's out and about, he stomps and he sings, but now he's gone off. It's dark and he's not acting as he normally does. And that shows me that he's unhappy. So my answer isn't just that he's unhappy because the dog's dead. It's not just that it's unhappy because it's dark. It's that he's unhappy because the dog's dead, it's dark, and he's acting differently to how he normally would. Normally he'd be stomping and singing, but now he's only just out. We don't know where he is. We don't know how he's reacting. So I've added that depth into my answer. And that's what I'd like you to do when you're looking at your predictive questions. The first one is about page 80. Um, the narrator stating that everything was pointing towards the same dreadful conclusion about Joe's death. Think about the reasons the narrator thought that Joe was dead at that point. The second one is about how the peaceful families might have changed if Joe is dead. If he's dead, what would change about their life? How would their relations with each other and with other people in the story alter? Fourth one, sorry, the third question is, where do you think Joe could be and why? Remember what Molly said at the end of that passage. If you've read on, you'll probably find out where he is. But if you haven't read on, maybe you can make a prediction. It'd be interesting to know your ideas. And then if you can complete those on this sheet, please. The blue section is just showing the example of the type of answer we're after. Okay, guys, thank you for listening and your attention today. I look forward to seeing those responses. See you soon. Bye.